Appleton can be proud of itself for a lot of firsts. The first hydroelectrically generated electricity. First house that was lit with hydropower. What is hydroelectricity? The word itself simply means electricity developed by running water. In the modern day, it may bring to mind images of massive dams with turbines spinning in their depths. However, the Vulcan station was just a shack sitting on top of a water wheel that spun with the current of the Fox River. The Vulcan Street plant was the first Edison hydroelectric power station, brought right here in Appleton, Wisconsin, boasting two Edison K dynamos. Using these two dynamos, it produced one tenth of the power required to operate a modern smartphone. The Vulcan was part of the major industrialization of Appleton. This was established as a power plant for commercial use uh, for a paper mill, uh, foundry, turnery, and several houses. In 1882, the brand new Hearthstone House became the first home in the United States to be powered by hydroelectricity. Henry James Rogers was an industrialist and business owner in Appleton. The Hearthstone was his personal residence, and he ran a variety of grain and pulp mills along the river. Mr. Rogers was approached by one of Thomas Edison's salespeople asking, well, would you be interested in this in your new house as well as your factory? The answer was definitely yes, why not? This is very easy to turn on the switch. If the gas goes out and comes back on, you don't have to worry about getting the thing relit or your plant blowing up in the meanwhile, uh, much less of a fire hazard. The first dynamo was brought online in 1882, with a second brought in shortly after. The technology was still primitive, with a person stationed in a room watching a light bulb being powered by the dynamos to regulate voltage. Once the Vulcan got running and proved its worth, competition immediately moved in and, well, can we do the same thing? And uh, so it, it was the start of an evolution. Over the next eight years, other utilities moved in, generating their power through other means. It started in 1882, I want to say November 1882. It burnt in 1890. In the meantime, there had been other plants uh, growing up and there, there was a constant fight in there. Is it going to be DC? Is it going to be AC? Uh, by the time it burnt, it was already old fashioned. It was, it was pretty well out of use. They kept adding more and more circuits to it. They kept building more and more uh, uh, outlets. AC and DC are like twins with different personalities, except for their currents. DC, or direct currents, flow in one direction and are typically the type of current used for batteries. AC, alternating currents, flow back and forth and the voltage is easier to control, typically used in houses. Hydroelectricity is very specific in terms of use according to where it comes from. What limits the use of hydroelectricity is the environment. No running water in the area means no hydropower. You would be very restricted in where you could have your generation areas. We were lucky in this area. We're, we're naturally, we're blessed with rivers. Not only were they a transportation for this area, but they were a source of power. Even beyond the electricity, just pure hydropower, the use of water. In the end, hydroelectricity is not widely usable, but in the right conditions, it's a reliable source of clean energy. Hydroelectricity is more niche energy despite its accomplishments. We must make sure that it's made known using just a little hydroelectric energy could help even today.